Last week I received a text message from a friend asking if it were true that Pope Francis had actually endorsed Senator Bernie Sanders for President of the United States. Now, before I get too far into this video, I do want to make it clear that I'm not endorsing any political candidate, including Senator Sanders. I do want to use this encounter, though, as a way to talk about the role of faith and politics. You know, it's, people often will say that you can't mix faith and politics, and then the other thing, of course, they say is you can't talk publicly about faith and politics or religion and politics without starting some kind of a contentious argument or fight. And so I recognize that's probably what's going to happen with this video. Nonetheless, I think it's important to talk about this encounter between Pope Francis and Senator Sanders. The encounter actually amounted to very little. It seems to me that the encounter from what I can read was really Pope Francis just politely greeting the senator and his wife as they came to the Vatican with a handshake and maybe a few polite words. It certainly was not a formal encounter where they sat down and discussed policy and certainly was not an endorsement. Most Catholics would know that it would be highly unlikely for a pope to interject himself into the politics of another nation by endorsing a particular candidate for office. That being said, I think it's important for us to listen to perhaps some of the reasons why people might have thought this was an endorsement. Certainly some websites were reporting that a little prematurely and inaccurately. But nonetheless, there are some things that I think Pope Francis has talked a lot about, and perhaps Bernie Sanders himself uh, seems to agree with, uh, namely the issue of morality in, in uh, economic systems. And I think this is something that's been a divisive point for some Catholics, because Catholics seem to have gotten used to the rhetoric around politics lying largely with the issues of abortion, same-sex marriage, and war. And we've really lost sight of this economic issue. And it's something that I think Pope Francis has called to the forefront in the fact that he's constantly talking about the marginalized in our society and our need to care for them. And I think this has become a challenge for a lot of Catholics, as has a lot of the Pope's papacy here. And I say that because Pope Francis has proved to be a very challenging Pope, amongst other things. And I think he challenges both sides. Many people seem to uh, paint him as certainly being a liberal Pope who is challenging the more conservative establishment of the Catholic Church. But I think if we truly listen to this Pope, what happens is everybody feels uncomfortable. In fact, he even said that in his latest apostolic exhortation, that he's going to make everybody uncomfortable. And you see, I don't think that's a bad thing, because I think it's what Jesus himself did. Jesus made the Jewish people uncomfortable. He made the Jewish elite uncomfortable. He made the Romans uncomfortable. He made everybody uncomfortable. In fact, that's how he ended up on a cross. You don't end up on a cross by saying things that make everybody happy and placate everyone, as people often make Christ out to be. I think people mistakenly make Francis out to be that kind of a person, too, who is just trying to placate people and being this really nice guy. But if we really take seriously what he says in his documents, in his speeches, we realize this is a very challenging person uh, that we're encountering here. And I think he challenges everybody. As much as uh, perhaps some people don't want to admit it, um, he's very challenging. He challenges the right, certainly, and the more conservative aspects in the, in the church when he brings up these issues of the need for reform within the Catholic Church and the need for a focus on the poor and the marginalized. Because again, like I said, so many people have become comfortable with certain challenges, such as on the issues of pro-life and on the issues of marriage being defined as between one woman and one man. But we become a little uh, distance, perhaps, from the fact that we personally need to be involved in these issues of economic injustice and uh, social reform. And I think for a lot of people, that can be an uncomfortable position. On the flip side, there's a number of people who are involved in social justice work within the Catholic Church. And a lot of them can become uncomfortable when they realize that this Pope is not changing any, any doctrines on issues perhaps of same-sex marriage or uh, liturgical reform or anything like that. So overall, I think that Pope Francis has done a good job challenging everybody if that's his goal, I think, mission accomplished. 
I also think it's important for us to take these challenges seriously. I found that a lot of people want to dismiss Pope Francis simply by saying, well, you know, when he said that, he wasn't speaking authoritatively, he wasn't speaking infallibly, and therefore I don't need to pay attention to him. I think that's the wrong attitude to take. Certainly, the Pope doesn't speak infallibly in all instances, and in certain instances, the Pope himself has said, I'm not speaking infallibly when I say this. At the same time, what he's not saying is, I'm not speaking infallibly, so therefore feel free to ignore me. I think the Pope is very serious in his commitment to social justice and to certain reforms within the Catholic Church. And I think it'd be wise for any Catholic to seriously engage that. You don't always have to agree with everything the Pope says when he's not speaking infallibly, of course. But I think to simply dismiss the Pope or to just say, well, he's not speaking infallibly, so therefore I can just ignore him, is the wrong approach as, as well. I think the approach is to seriously engage what he's saying, and then to understand that what he's saying needs to be placed in the context of the entirety of our Catholic faith. You see, so often I find Catholics tend to compartmentalize aspects of their faith, or perhaps in a different way, they tend to cling to one aspect of the faith, and that becomes uh, kind of their niche area. So you might have a Catholic who is real big into liturgical reform and renewal, or you might have a Catholic who is real big into social justice initiatives, or you might have a Catholic who is real big into the pro-life stance. But the reality is that even if these are your niche areas within Catholicism and mean, your approach to the faith, it doesn't give you a right to ignore other aspects of the faith and certainly to uh, kind of thumb your nose at these people who are in other aspects of the faith or who find these other aspects to be their niche areas because the faith is meant to be taken in its entirety. So in other words, you can't be a social justice Catholic and then say, but I don't care for anything in terms of the liturgy of the church. Nor can you be a pro-life Catholic who says, oh, well, I don't find this need for economics uh, justice really all that appealing, and so I'm not too concerned with it. So that's a wide and gross abuse of the Catholic faith. The Catholic faith says, certainly you can have your, your niche areas. You might be more drawn to pro-life issues issues or towards social justice issues. But what you can't do is say that that precludes me from being involved at all in the liturgical issues that the church faces or any other number of issues that the church may face. I think that's one of the things Pope Francis has nicely challenged everybody on, is that you have to look at a bunch of different issues all at once, rather than just say, oh, I'm going to take my niche issue and make that the only way I look at, at religion. And so I think that in this meeting with Senator Sanders, one of the things that has come out is, again, the Pope's own issue, or is his own proclivity towards the poor. And I think that while this is certainly something that's near and dear to the, the Pope's heart, it should be something that's near and dear to every Catholic's heart. And it shouldn't upset people that the Pope is meeting with somebody else who happens to share a similar concern. It also shouldn't lead people, though, on the other hand, to say that the Pope is simply endorsing this one candidate, because certainly I'm sure that there are things where if the Pope were to sit down with Bernie Sanders or with any political candidate, he would say, hey, these are ideas that we share in common, and these are things that we have a passion for, but there's also other things I'd like to challenge you on. And I think that could be true of any political candidate as well. And not just any political candidate, but any Catholic. And so I think that's where we need to really engage Pope Francis is in that message of saying, yes, there's a lot of things he speaks to me that burn within my heart or my heart is on fire because we share a similar interest. But at the same time, there's probably some things where the Pope is challenging me to grow in my faith as a Catholic and to understand that's a good thing too and to engage those things so that we can grow in our own Catholic faith and then take that faith and bring it into the public sphere so that other people can grow from it as well.